I'm Craig Lawless. I'm Kevin Garcia King. And this is Sounds Like Infrastructure. Over the past few years, you might have started to notice two words in particular popping up on your LinkedIn feed, in newspaper headlines, and more than likely in your workplace. Diversity and inclusion are terms we've all been hearing a lot more of recently. And although their definitions are pretty straightforward, we don't always know exactly what they mean, especially when it comes to business. And so, to celebrate International Women's Day, we decided to look into these concepts a little bit more. And to do that, we got in touch with Chelsea Rousseau, HR business partner for Weber, for Obiel's construction business based in Texas. And although Chelsea is usually based in Houston... I'm currently on a temporary assignment with Ferrovial Construction Headquarters um, in Madrid, Spain, serving as a North America HR liaison. And I've been with the company for over five years. After talking to Chelsea for a few minutes, you realize that it's no surprise she jumped at the opportunity to live and work in Madrid. Her career has been constantly evolving, and she's always had this drive to move forward and embrace new opportunities. Take, for example, her first job when she was just 17 working at a car dealership in the internet sales team. And um, if you can believe it, by age 18, I was leading that department and training other dealerships' internet sales teams. At 19, while she was studying at the University of Houston, she left the dealership and joined a HR recruiting agency, which she quite liked. So I then concentrated my business degree in HR management and at that agency gained some great recruiting experience. A few years later, she worked as a recruiter for a small boutique oil and gas recruiting firm. Three years after that, she joined an international staffing firm that had opened up a branch in Houston and helped get that branch up and running and bring in new accounts. And Chelsea identified this job in particular as being a key moment in her career because... It really solidified my desire to truly get into a human resources department, not just be on the outside looking in, um, but I was really ready to plant my feet with one organization rather than a a third-party consulting uh, recruiting firm. This desire brought her to her current job at Weber, where she works on things like employee experience, graduate programs, talent development, and diversity and inclusion. My career in HR has evolved um, a lot, and and part of of this evolution has certainly included um, being a part of some diversity and inclusion initiatives. And it's Chelsea's experience with diversity and inclusion initiatives that Kevin focused on when he chatted to her for this episode. His first question was related to all this experience she's had, often in male-dominated fields, and how that experience has influenced her perception of diversity in different companies and also in her day-to-day work. Well, I think my experience, um, as you said, in these primarily male dominated fields, uh, it's certainly increased my awareness um, and belief in the importance of having diversity in an organization. I've been extremely fortunate to have strong mentors along the way, including Weber's chief HR officer, uh, Mitch Beckman. And um, you know, I've, I've never been one to really be intimidated by being the only woman in the room. In fact, that's really only motivated me further. But it is true that when you sit down and take the time to speak with women on their experience in these male dominated fields, myself included, you will hear some stories and you'll learn about experiences that are unique to women in the workforce and some of the challenges that have have come along the way. So um, I've learned that it's it's really important that as an organization, we have uh, a plan in place, a specific strategy to be inclusive uh, and diverse and to promote that that environment. And being in HR, you know, with a background in recruiting and focused on talent in the organization, I'm interested in finding the best candidate and developing and engaging the best talent, regardless of gender or any other category. But with that said, when we identify that there's a large gap in a certain area, we want to bridge that gap, right? And when there's a long history of a gap in a certain area, we can't just sit back and expect that to change or fix itself. So we have to make a concerted effort. We have to have specific strategies in place to put forth the effort that will uh, eventually lead to that change. So uh, I think we're making such great progress, but I think there's a long way to go. 
Um, it's shaped my specific interest in this area because of my own experiences and because of the experiences of, of colleagues and peers around me. Um, so this this has driven my interest in, in the area of diversity and inclusion and has really uh, motivated me to get involved in related initiatives across the company. That's great. That's great. And, and it, you know, thank you for sharing a little bit of how that influenced your career and a little bit of how you approach some of these uh, things or some of these uh, not issues, but sort of changes within the, the organization. Um, I would like to ask you a little bit. You were talking about the programs that you have at Weber. Uh, could you share with us some of the programs that you're implementing at the moment and perhaps maybe share, you know, some of the experiences that uh, your colleagues have shared with you and perhaps have, you know, impacted you in a, in a positive way? Sure. Well, um, for sure, not only at Weber, but across Ferrovial, there's been several uh, programs implemented um, and that are ongoing with the goal of increasing recruitment and development and leadership opportunities um, specific to female talent within the organization. So we have several strategies that we've implemented and several programs. Um, to touch on a few of them, uh, something we've done within Weber is create a group that's called WOW or Women of Weber. And that group's mission statement is to be a community designed for and led by the women of Weber to connect, collaborate, and share thoughts, ideas, challenges, and achievements. It's a channel in which to empower, enrich, and engage the women of Weber. And the program came about because, as it turns out, both the human resources team and operations team, women in operations, we, we found that we were both simultaneously discussing how great it would be to have some type of platform um, in which the women across the organization could connect, being that they are in a male-dominated field. Uh, they don't. They may not know many other women who do what they do. So we all saw the value in, hey, why not take the women that we have right here in the company, not just within the industry, um, but take the women we have here and connect them. So we created an action plan and, and we, uh, we stepped into action. So we have every other month we hold a session that's led by one of the WOW members. It can be someone in HR, it can be someone in uh, operations, so an engineer or a project manager. It can be an accountant or an estimator. Um, so a wide variety of just uh, women professionals that are coming together to, to share their story or train the team on a certain uh, area. And so it's been, it's been so amazing. Um, I've personally heard from so many women that one didn't realize we had this many women in the company. So they're connecting with and, and meeting for the first time in many cases, other engineers and project managers and estimators in different cities and states. And they're, they've been able to encourage one another and learn from one another and just have another female colleague or, or mentor in the room, even if that's a virtual room over Teams. Um, so they see the benefit of this. This is not just, you know, an HR in initiative. This is something that the organization sees value in. And um, to me, that's very inspiring because we're thinking as uh, of diversity and inclusion as beyond just a human resources program. It's something that we're all contributing to. The Women of Weber, or WOW program, has been a really successful initiative that Chelsea helped set up that aims to highlight female talent within the company. They spotlight and feature women talent across the company at all levels. And the response from the women involved has been really good. So we asked Chelsea to give us an idea of how the initiative works. We, we put together just a PDF. Uh, we conduct an interview and put together a PDF of their photo and ask some questions about them. Tell us about your background. Who are you? Where, how did you get here? What are your interests? And it's just really been a, a, a great way to just open dialogue and, and really just connect. Um, in addition to that, we are uh, members of various organizations and associations that we're very involved in. Um, one of them is NAWIC, or the National Association of Women in Construction. So we attend and sponsor various events. Uh, just last month, we were an event sponsor for the Industry Appreciation Night. 
which is specific to construction um, in, in Houston. And in attendance from Weber was everyone from operations to project controls to executive leadership. So we fully have that support. And it wasn't just women of Weber that attended, but men as well, um, which is which we believe is, is very important in this process. Um, we're members of SWE or the Society of Women Engineers. So we're partnering with the SWE groups at some of our target universities for uh, target recruitment opportunities and speaking opportunities within those groups to really promote our internship programs and field engineer opportunities. Um, the same goes for University of Houston's uh, Cougars of Women in Construction Group. Uh, we actually sit on University of Houston's Construction Management Board, but specific to the uh, Women in Construction Group, we recently brought a, a group of those members out to tour one of our job sites. It was our I-10 CLE project in Houston, um, which a great effort led by one of our project managers, Maya Janes Green. So we had a group of those uh, women uh, pursuing a construction management degree come out to one of our job sites, really learn about the culture of Weber and see physically see one of our projects. So that was great. And uh, just this week, we had two project managers speaking to girls at a grade school level on the importance and encouraging them to consider joining the fields of engineering and construction. So these are just some examples of, of our involvement and what we're doing internally within Weber with the female talent that we have, and also externally outside of the company, but in the industry and in the schools and universities uh, to really get the message out there and be a part of, of the change that we're seeing. And you were mentioning as well that Weber uh, nominated uh, or people actually people from Weber or women from Weber were nominated to the Weiss Award last year. Could you tell us a little bit of how that came about? Yes. Yeah. So actually it was uh, for this year's program, we have nominated um, Amaya Corador uh, Palomino. She's our deputy CFO as well as Paloma Fernandez Ruiz. She's uh, our area manager. And so, you know, Weiss or the Women in Construction and Engineering Award in Europe. For those who don't know, um, it is an awards program based in Europe, but it's a, it's for European women working around the world. So even though Amaya and Paloma are working with Weber in Texas, they're you know European women, and so we were able to to nominate them. Uh, so we're we're really excited to do that. Um, I am sitting on the Weiss committee with Ferrovial and uh, was honored to present uh, last week to the group of global nominees on saying yes to opportunities and just getting to know them and connect with these women around the world. Just an incredible group of women um, and being able to encourage them because uh, for some, it's really stepping them out of their comfort zone to to step up and say, you know, I believe that I deserve this nomination and this is why and this is what I've done. That's not always comfortable and easy for us to do. Um, so it's been great to be a part of that group. Um, this may be Weber's first year participating, but I know that we'll, we'll continue to do so in the future. That's great. And congratulations as well to the people who were nominated. I think uh, it's a very, uh, you know, international and even though it's European, a very international award that recognizes the, the work that women do in the in the construction and civil engineering industry. So um, congratulations to you and the team for that as well. Just to go a little bit to the to this year's main, um, I would say main theme that the UN chose for uh, the International Women's Day, uh, they say that you know this year should be dedicated to the role that you know gender equality has on guaranteeing a sustainable tomorrow. Um, would you like to just expand a little bit on this concept and you know perhaps from your uh, professional mind? What do you think is the relationship between women and sustainability, especially in the construction industry? But I guess a general will be overview to other industries as well. Sure. And I think it's so great that the UN is linking gender diversity and sustainability because one may not immediately understand the connection there. But we hear businesses all the time talking about wanting to be and needing to be sustainable. And so relating the two, I think, is extremely powerful. Uh, what I would say is, 
you know, for sure as an industry and, and beyond the construction industry. But speaking from a, a Weber, a Frovial perspective, you know, we want to be sustainable in this market. We want to be competitive. We want to be innovative. We want to be the employer of choice. Um, and in order to be all of this, we have to have diversity in the workforce because diversity in the workforce results in diversity of thought. And diversity of thought results in higher levels of innovation. So implementing diversity and include, inclusion strategies and setting ambitious targets, for example, gender balance and hiring practices is a, such a significant step in the process to deliver change in a sector that continues to lack diversity. And so becoming more diverse and inclus inclusive is a strategic part of our mission to be the recognized leader for innovation, excellence, sustainability. And I think as industry leaders, we, we have to be committed to a strategy that will guide us in creating a workplace where we all belong and where we're committed to ensuring that others feel the same. And we have to acknowledge that this will not happen by chance, but by deliberate and courageous at times action so our goal is to create an environment where we, we hold leaders also accountable for driving this change. Um, and I just, I think that in order to be the employer of choice and to be a sustainable organization, you've got to have a diverse uh, environment. You have to have an inclusive di uh, environment. All of these um, areas lead to innovative thinking and we don't want to have a group of, of uh, the same minded individuals in the same room making decisions. We have to have different perspectives, people that come from different backgrounds and different ways of thoughts, ways of doing things, ways of thinking. And all of that drives innovation and, and sustainability and excellence. So I think there's there's clearly a link there. Um, and I'm really glad that the UN has decided to um, to focus on that this year. Since Chelsea started her career, diversity and inclusion have evolved quite a lot. As we mentioned at the beginning of the episode, in the last decade alone, a lot more people have become familiar with these words. So we wanted to know if Chelsea has noticed this change and whether she thinks enough has been done. Well, uh, the first thing that comes to mind is that we're making progress. For sure, over the last 10 years, I have seen a huge change. Um, just in the dialogue and the conversations, uh, the thought that's going into this, um, the initiatives that are being launched. Um, so I, I think we're making progress. I know we're making progress, but I also know that we have a long way to go. There are still people out there who have no idea why we're even having this conversation. Um, they don't see the significance of it, um, but I don't believe that's the majority. Um, I know that at the same time, on a national scale and on an international scale, every organization is thinking and talking and hopefully acting on diversity and inclusion areas. I know for Vial, including Weber, certainly is. It's a huge focus of ours. And there are communities and organizations, like we touched on earlier, that are encouraging young women at universities and girls at the grade school level to pursue a STEM degree, to pursue a skilled trade, that they are equally as capable and that talent has no gender. So we are intentionally putting female role models in front of them so they can see themselves in that, in that role one day. Um, because like we've been talking about, change has to be intentional. We can't just sit back and wait for it to happen. Uh, and I see the world doing this and I think it's amazing and I think it's needed. And I do see progress. So we have a long way to go. We have to be intentional about this change. But I think we've come a long way uh, over the past 10 years. And I think we have a long way to go, but that we're, we're well on our way to progress. Talking about the road ahead and just to conclude a little bit of uh, you know the interview, what do you think are your personal or professional goals for this 2022? My goal would be that we take the, the steps that we've already done in establishing groups such as Women of Weber, joining the associations that we've joined, and really be more strategic um, and focused on the, the frequency in which we can be involved in those areas. 
you know, at the same time we are we are uh, running these initiatives, we're also running an HR department. We're also running a project. And so my goal would be for us to continue forming committees and focus groups and task groups that can almost full time focus in these areas so that we can truly see uh, that change and that the industry and these groups can continue to see Weber and Frovial and see that we are a company that is extremely focused in these areas that will really help us to bring in more female talent and to be known as as an organization that values diversity and inclusion, uh, regardless of what type of diversity that is, that it's on our minds and that we're making deliberate investments and choices to be a part of that. So my goal and the path forward would be to take uh, we've taken some great steps, but I think we need to advance that further um, and just continue to get more and more involved. And, you know, of course, we have certain percentages and targets and KPIs that we've set for the amount of women we'd like to hire into the work workplace. Uh, we know that there are barriers to that because we have to look at how many women are actually enrolled in construction management and civil engineering programs. And so there, there are barriers, barriers to that. But I think as we continue to get involved, um, we're going to, we're going to continue to see that to change. So I would just say that, you know, we've, we've started some really great things. We're seeing some movement and I'd like to see that grow even more. Um, We've talked about, so WOW stands for women of Weber, but what can we do to change that to WOW standing for women of the world and bringing this program beyond Weber into the Ferrovial group globally? Um, and so there's things like this that we're, we're thinking of now that we hope to see uh, really just take off in uh, 2022 into 2023. And uh, we're, we're really excited about what more we can do in these areas. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you so much for for this interview. It's been a pleasure uh, talking to you, and yeah, I hope we can we can have another one in the future once uh, you know you implement these plans and and things start to move forward. Absolutely, no, the pleasure's been all mine. Thank you so much for having me. I'm I'm passionate and excited about these opportunities, so I'm I'm happy to speak on them at any time. Thank you so much. We just wanted to say a big thank you again to Chelsea for chatting to us for today's episode and for all the amazing work she's been doing with Weber and Ferrovial. Sounds Like Infrastructure is a collaboration between Ferrovial and Valletta Media. Our team includes Kevin Garcia-King, Jose Garcia-Guaita, Arantxa Gulias, Bethany Ashcroft, Paloma Gonzalez de Canales Diaz, and of course myself, Craig Lawless. Today's episode was also edited by me. If you like the podcast and want more episodes, don't forget to subscribe wherever you listen. You can follow Ferrovial on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and be sure to check out the blog for more stories like this one. I'm Craig Lawless, and this is Sounds Like Infrastructure.